Welcome to Directed Video's impromptu holiday episode. You might ask yourself how Aladdin and the King of Thieves aligns with the holiday season, and I would point out that no matter how you celebrate, there is nothing more relatable than a family member being an asshole. Enjoy. This movie went down like uh, like a school lunch, you know? Like Yeah, it was kind of a lunchable of a movie. Yeah, it it was it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't fun. Aladdin and the King of Thieves was a movie. It was. It it was boring, I think. I don't think okay, so after watching the last movie, I don't think this movie was boring. I mean, it wasn't sort of not boring. <laughs> I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was bad. I just think it was milk toast, you know? It was kind of milk toast. I, um, Cheney suggested, and I think I agree with this, that it probably is basically just a really long episode of the TV show. It had the kind of logic and the kind of acting, basically, that you would associate with a TV show. Mm-hmm. And less that you would associate with, like, a motion picture. There is a part in this movie about halfway through where I was like, oh, this is where you you divvy up the two-part series finale. You right mean here. where it fucking cuts to commercial? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, literally? I was so irritated by that. I was like, this is a movie. It was released on home video. You can't just pull shit like this. Uh, we've we've already talked about the the sweet sweet disclaimer that happens at the beginning, but we did we, I did get it again for this one. Uh, and there were a couple reasons that I felt like it was a fair thing to say in front of this one. Not not that the disclaimer was any good. No, but, um, but I I definitely think this one I was like, oh, this is a little for no reason. The the forty I guess it's to give the forty thieves character, but they are designed mm-hmm. atrociously. <laughs> We start this movie with this caravan of suspicious folk Mm -hmm. um, going to Agrabah, and we learn that it is because there's a wedding happening. We learn that there is a party here in Agrabah. There is a party. Which is not a good... Here's here's what the musical number, There's a Party Here in Agrabah, is here to tell you. One, Jasmine and Len are getting married. Two... We got Robin Williams back. We got him back. And he is all over the place in this musical number, and he will continue to be all over the place for the entirety of the movie because they were so psyched to have gotten him back that they were just milking it the whole time. I would describe Robin Williams' performance in this movie as excessive and uncut. (laughs) (laughs) It does feel excessive and uncut. On the other hand... He was he was so much more a character than in the last movie. Yeah, where I was I was he were, I was immediately so fucking tired of him in, in the last movie. In this movie, there is not a little bit of um, suggestion that he's the closest thing Aladdin has ever had to a father. I wish they went more into it. I I really mm-hmm. think the movie could have would have been served better if they leaned into that. It's frustrating. I mean, it, there would have been an interesting sort of found family aspect if Aladdin just hadn't basically forgiven his dirtbag dad about all the terrible things that he has done throughout his childhood and then this movie. And then, and also, based on the ending of this movie, the near future. <laughs> we'll continue to do. My mom once described this movie to me as, I said, I, I watched it and I said, there's no point to this movie. And she told me, this is when I was like a little kid, and she told me, oh, the point to that movie is that when you're a dad, you could get away with anything. <laughs> Maybe that's not what it was trying to say, but that's what it said. That absolutely, uh, this movie, this is a movie that is like obsessed with biological fathers <laughs> to an unhealthy degree, I think, in my opinion. Genie does have a line when Aladdin's talking about his dad where he's just like, you haven't mentioned your dad in the past two movies, Al. <laughs> <laughs> he sure has it. He, he he does kind of say that. <laughs> it's awesome. It, it's a, it's a taste of of the of the almost Shakespearean heights the lines in this movie get reaches by the end. 
So so we so there's a party here in Agrabah. This song goes on for like five minutes. It's really long. It's like a five to seven minute song. It and the problem with that is there are so few five to seven minute songs that work for that amount of time. And this song was immediately like already overstaying its welcome. It, but I think by the only thing I liked about it was that the thieves do get their own little stanza, and I was like, oh, that's uh-huh. that's fun. We could stop. <laughs> That is fun. Could could have stopped. It is. It's not. It's maybe not the worst song in the movie, but it's it's underwhelming. Yeah, Aladdin and Jasmine are having a wedding. They're finally, <laughs> finally, after all of their adventures on Aladdin the TV show, they're ready to tie the knot. Except Aladdin is not ready to tie the knot. He's got one last hang up. Aladdin's thing actually seems to not be so much about getting married, but about, like, potentially becoming a father, which is kind of fair, I guess. If you're gonna make him have this problem, it's not, like, about Jasmine. He he is freaking out because he's never had a father, and he doesn't know if he can be a father, and now he's gonna get married, it's all gonna be, like, real. He's about to go through with it anyway, so it's not that big a hang-up. It's, it's so weird that, that this is this is the thing, because I feel like this should have been a problem, like, I don't know, when kid number one was on the way, right? Not right before the wedding. I think they wanted the third movie to, like, be about them getting married, though. If you look at the, if you look at the, like, box of this... Back cover is just this ridiculous and terrible picture of them, like, all dressed up to get married. It's also the one they use on Disney Plus for some reason, and that is a crime because the movie does not look half as bad as this picture looks. Yeah, this, uh, the box art for, for this, uh, is, uh, is pretty not great. This movie looks, I, I would describe the animation of this movie also kind of as middling. Like, it's not, it's not, it, they definitely had a little bit more money. And or understand it. Like, maybe they knew how to stretch a buck a little bit more in this one than the last one. No, that's, yeah, it's definitely true. I mean, they had also, I assume, like, they've just gotten through, like, doing the the TV show. So they have a lot of maybe experience. They use, like, recycled stuff, Yeah, too. well, they have experience working with these characters, right? Like... Right. I do like that in this movie, Aladdin gets a different outfit. I really liked that. Aladdin and Jasmine, yeah. It's like he gets an upgraded version of the Prince Ali look. A little slicker, a little more like rapscallion, but it, it works. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I thought Jasmine's alt look was okay. I thought her wedding dress was bad. It was not good. <laughs> Is. It's very weird. It, what it, here's here's what gets me is it kind of looks like they based her wedding dress on her regular clothes, and then somebody said you have to fill in the parts where she's showing skin, and so it looks like kind of they colored her skin just the color of the wedding dress, and didn't really work to redesign the dress at all. She like walks out, and like the 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 expectation of the film right is that she walks out, and you're supposed to be like, oh wow. Look at how beautiful she is. And then my reaction was instead, oh, she's ugly. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad look for her. <laughs> it's not, this, is not, this is not what you want. Um, thankfully, they, 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 they don't have to worry about it because this, this wedding gets crashed. In a big way. So the 40 thieves send elephants to crash the wedding so that they can steal a wedding gift, which seems like the most ridiculous way to get a wedding gift. Nobody was even looking at the gifts. They were all hanging out. You could you, you could have just gone wedding. in there. <laughs> yeah, but they have to make the most amount of noise. And the fact that none of them got captured is wild. The fact that none of them got trampled is wild. I had a really hard time with this scene because throughout the whole scene, elephants are supposed to be like running through it. But also... We only can afford one. We can only afford one elephant. (laughs) There's also all these like little vignettes with like all the characters getting into like tussles with the 40 thieves. And it's weird because it's like everybody should be way more worried about the elephants. Also, Genie? Yeah. Genie. Ugh. He spends like the first 20 minutes of this robbery 
not doing anything, just just quipping, just throwing out some jokes. And it's like, listen, Jeannie, if you're going to be doing your type five, I need you to also be stopping these elephants. Like, yeah, he decides to yell stampede instead of like doing something about elephants, which I know he can do. And then because of all the elephants, the roof is collapsing. And he decides that the best use of his talents is to hold up the roof, which he then fails to do. It does not work. And then after the roof is all fallen in, he's like, well, I guess I can stop the 40 thieves now. I guess now that I've failed to stop the 40 thieves, I can stop them. I bet you, if this is anything like TV show, I bet the TV show has a lot of like, half-assed ways to make it seem like Genie can't help in a situation when obviously you would just point Genie at this problem and have it be fixed. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do something about it. Like, I get that he's not as strong as he used to be, but he's still he is still enough of a threat that when he does start genieing it up, one of the thieves immediately yells, nobody told us they had the power of a genie here. Yeah, that was our main villain, a character who is very boring and does not need to exist. No, and we we do so and at this point we are I think fully introduced to the uh 40 racially insensitive thieves. Um well, to be fair, there's only actually like 6 of them. There's only actually 6 thieves. There is an understanding that there's more, but there's not more. You just have, there's the uh, They're right there. They're right off camera. I promise we drew them. There's the one that looks like a really racially insensitive Arabic guy, but a zombie. Um, yes, the snake there's charmer. There's the one that, yeah, except that he, he doesn't charm a snake, he just has a rope. He just has a rope, yeah. There is the one that looks like a very racist, look and acts like a very, very racist uh, Chinese caricature. But is dressed like a Mongol, and I'm just like, what are we doing here? <laughs> What are we doing here? <laughs> but he fights like a Shaolin monk. He fights, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, awful. Then there's the triplets who, to be fair, are probably not much of a caricature of anything. They're just the same guy over and over. At one point, one of them. At one point, I thought they maybe had French accents. They do look a little bit like the chef in uh, <laughs> Little Mermaid. Yeah, but three of them and like. Like they're remying each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening. And then the uh, the guy who just kind of looks like a hillbilly, and you kind of wonder if he wandered in from a different movie. He looks like no other character. Like no other character gets. I think the gross, like weirdly southern. Like this is a guy who people like. Like if he were in like a different movie, people would have been like, "Oh, that's Bubba." Right. Like, right. But it, he's in this one as a thief. And I guess and his he ha, uh, none of these none of these thieves act, have like character. They're 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 all just kind of like they're a, just caricatures. Yeah. Caricatures of of something or other just to give the 40 thieves a little bit of uh, I guess diversity isn't the right word, but menace. <laughs> it's not quite the right word. I It, it might have been an attempt to do that, but it was not done well. Well, and then we have the big, the 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 most evil looking guy. His name is Saluk. It looks like yes. So he uh, he has these um, Wolverine claws. Only one of them, though. Uh, yeah, he's got like a. I guess you would call it almost like a brass knuckle, but instead of like brass knuckle bits, it's just claws. Yeah. And that is the one kind of interesting thing about his character. Everything else is just like, he's the bad guy. Get it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have uh, Kasim. We'll get to Kasim. And, and then, we, yeah, and we'll get to Kasim. We'll fucking get to him. By the way, Saluk, voiced by the indispensable Jerry Orbach, who was in a lot of stuff, but is primarily known for being uh, being in Dirty Dancing. He's the one who put Baby in the Corner, and he played Detective Lenny Briscoe on Law and Order. John Lenny has a whole bit about Jerry Orbach. It's very funny. He's he, but he is the voice of of our of one of our two main villains. Uh. There is okay. So <laughs> depending on how you file this film there are one to three villains yes as long as you can count the guards as a minor villain because it's because razul somehow somehow 
still has a job as captain of the guard. Razul, is that his name? I called him I called him Gazim. Oh, apparently he was named. Oh, this is very interesting. He was unnamed in the first film. Apparently they named him after one of their layout supervisors, Rasul Azadani. That would be an unfortunate and what an unfortunate character to be named after. <laughs> yeah, he I know. Sucks. But like, hey, can't you why can't you name Aladdin's hot dad after me, guys? Or maybe he asked, he was like, I want to be, if you're going to name a character after me, it has to be the shitty guard. He's the worst. His whole, his whole characterization has not changed since the first movie, which is just disliking Aladdin. He dislikes Aladdin. He hates that Aladdin. He hates that Aladdin has moved up in the world. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's his whole character. He might say at one point in this movie, once a street rat, always a street rat. Yes. It's like distinctly possible that that happens. If he didn't say it in this movie, he definitely said it in the last one. Um, Right. So the plan, the 40 Thieves plan was, we are going to elephant stampede this wedding, steal from yep. all of the guests, and Got also it. while we're doing that, uh, our uh, our leader, our king of thieves, uh, will be rummaging around the unguarded, unwatched treasure room. Well, it's more like the present room, I think. And take the oracle. <laughs> now, I don't know where to start with this. Except mm-hmm. that this is not what an oracle is. I mean, look, look, look. I'm looking. <laughs> if the genie calls it the oracle, that's what it wants to be called. Okay, and I look, look, <laughs> look. Uh huh. I'm looking. Let's I'm looking. not get too much into definitions of words and what an oracle actually is and whether or not it's a good idea to even give this as a gift. It is bananas. There's an oracle, it exists. It, it is. So that's the other thing I wanted to get into, right, is it is bananas to me that somebody gave this away as a gift. I guess it's once you get once you get your one question, I guess it's kind of useless. It's just a scepter. So you would think that it would be like kept in the family though for another one question. That's fair. You would think that the movie would take this object of power, this oop, and give it a little more set dressing like but it's just like a scepter in a pile of treasure. It is so quickly done that it made me want that that's what made, made me think it was like the TV show. It made me think, ah, I bet in the TV show they come across something magic once a week. Like every episode. Yeah. Right. So I bet in the world of Aladdin, as the writers of this movie understand it, this shit's normal. Maybe, but I, I do think if you're going to be, if you're going to extend this episode into a movie long series finale, we could have had a little bit of, a little bit of setup for it, right? Like, But we just don't. So the the power of the oracle is you get one question. Cool. All right. You don't have to be touching it. You don't have to be aware that it is a magical object. No. You ask a question and it answers. And that's how she is activated, apparently. Yago asks why the King of Thieves would want th- this stick. And the oracle pops out and is like, the King of Thieves wants me to lead him to this ultimate treasure. And Yago's like, sweet, where's the ultimate treasure? And she's like, no, you're right, got your question. And then Get to Yago's, yes, and then to Yago's extreme infuriation, nobody else will ask about this treasure for him, which I did think was a little rude, considering they've all met Yago. <laughs> I agree. I think it's a little fucked up, especially because Aladdin's like, I don't have any questions. My future, <laughs> my future is 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 fucking badass. I'm so good. I don't need to ask you anything. And it's like, my guy, <laughs> can't you just give him a bone, then, dude? Like, the rules about the Oracle are so fucking wild, too. Because he's like, I don't have any questions. Even if I had one question about my my past, I have so many that they'd be impossible to ask. And the Oracle fucking cheats, and it's like. Yeah, if only you could ask your father. It's it's such a <laughs> bullshit. The, this oracle objection, your honor. This oracle is leading the witness. Like, <laughs> do you do you? If I was Aladdin in that moment, I'd be like, well, I can't because he's fucking dead. And then the oracle would have been like, oh, 
is he though? And it's like, listen, you clearly, there is a question specifically you want me to ask. And then even worse, when he finally asks the question of where is my father? She says he is held, he is a captive in the world of the 40 Thieves or something. And I was immediately like, this is the most misleading way you could have you, you, described this. Do you just exist to stir shit? <laughs> they're like that one, they're like that one cousin on Thanksgiving that just goes through people's Facebook so that they know exactly what to ask to start a fight. That's what the Oracle is. Do you think that the Oracle... Th- preposition oracle was a normal oracle who just got a little too a little too haughty and somebody was like all right i'm trapping you in this scepter this is bullshit yes that as we've established is my theory for every magical object in in and around agrippa is somebody did something stupid and now they're a stick and now they're a stick or a giant sand tiger yeah right uh or they're a genie in a lamp we get we get we get the most bananas conversation between Aladdin and Jasmine prior to him asking the oracle this question. Mm-hmm. Which is Aladdin being like, I just don't know if it's worth it, you know? Like, do I really want to go do this? Oh my god, and her answers are buck wild. I it made me so mad. I was like, sorry. His dad didn't raise him. She's like, I know you, I know you're dead because I know you. I know the man you turned out to be. And I was like, he left. He wasn't there. He had nothing to do with this motherfucker, that. This motherfucker left before his son was born. That's what it seems like, right? Because he said he left the, the dagger with his wife. By the way, Aladdin has a dagger that belonged with his dad. It will shockingly not really come into play, except as a symbol. It has no purpose other than to show the audience the little hand of Midas symbol that's on it that is also mm-hmm. on Aladdin's dad's cape. And like so, you, so you can go, yeah. so you can go, hmm. But that suggests that he was already part of the 40 Thieves before he left, too. Which which I don't think is true because they mentioned that he he just showed up one day and like took over. Yeah, but that was a song. Maybe the idea was that he like worked his way up. Like, once he'd taken over, they stopped doing all the fun murders. That's that's how they try to skew his dad as, like, kind of a good guy, too, is that he he stopped letting them murder. Yeah. They can still murder. They still have to murder to get in, though. There can only ever be 40 thieves. Right. Well, it's self-defense. And at this point, I'm thinking... Oh, is it? Is there like a? Is there like? Is this like the Pirates of the Caribbean? Is it like a curse? So there can only, so they can only be forty, and that's why he can't leave this life. That's why he's capped it. No, no, that's they're no, just he's, no. In fact, that honestly, that might have been worse for me. I liked that they tried to do something with this complicated character. The fact that they did not quite manage it is too bad. But, like, it would have been worse if they were just like, oh, yeah, he has to be in there because of magic. Because of magic. No, I, I agree. I agree that it, it's kind of where I thought the movie was going. I'm not saying that that's mm-hmm. where the movie should have gone. But we, this conversation... because they do a lot of magic in the movie. So you sort of keep expecting magic yeah, to show you, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, this, this conversation also does a thing that they do throughout this entire movie, which infuriates me, which is that Aladdin never talks about his mom, who actually raised him at least for at least until he was, you know... At least until he could, like, walk. Under, yeah. Uh, w- once he was old enough to steal, she was like, plot demands that I must die. But, like, <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is infuriating to me that, like, his mom doesn't even get a name. And she's also, like, they never talk about her except in, like, the, the like, third person. Like, I gave this to my wife. I was raised right. by my mom. And, like... It sucks because one of the big pitches in the like original story for this Alad- for the Aladdin movie was that he was going to have a mom and it was going to be a big deal. Right. I mean, Proud of Your Boy is a song that still exists. And it's so good. It's because it's in the Broadway version. Right? Yeah. It, they, it like really belabors that point the whole time because there was supposed to be this character who just doesn't exist. Who continues to not exist. Who continues to not exist. We could have even seen her. I mean, we have, like, magic and stuff. The Oracle can, like, show you people. 
The fact that Aladdin did not put together that his dad, who was wearing the same clothes as the King of Thieves, who he just fought, is hilarious. Right? I, I would have looked at that guy and been like, oh, that's the King of Thieves. Why didn't you just say that? Why are you like this? <laughs> Why are you being so weird about this? Just tell me I punched my dad today. <laughs> where, Oracle, where is my father? Your father is being held captive by the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me he's at McDonald's. <laughs> just tell me he's at McDonald's. Why are you so me- weird? <laughs> <laughs> Not everything else should be about drama, Oracle. <laughs> Jasmine, for some reason, can't go with him while he does this. She has to stay. Oh my god. Do you know who else can't go with him? Is the genie. And the fact that both of them decided to stay home is wild. It's like, well, we have to prepare the next wedding. Listen, genie could do that with the snap of his fingers, right? Like, we don't... <laughs> You know, you could just go. It's so irritating. And the one good thing about it, I think, is that Jasmine and the genie have, like, a scene that actually, like, kind of works and makes both of them feel like characters in a way that they didn't in the last movie. Where it's basically Jasmine's freaking out about sending Aladdin off alone with just fucking Abu and Yago. It's, yeah, which which I agree. It's a bad idea, bad right? Bad idea. <laughs> but yes. maybe maybe someone else should have gone with him. But also, you told him this is this is wild to me. She oh tells gosh, him she did say this. She tells him take all the time you need. And before the sun finishes setting, she's like, "Genie, do you think maybe he's in danger?" And like <laughs> I get it. It's Aladdin. It's been a day. He probably is. He's he's in danger. Like, statistically speaking, he's probably tripped over another evil grand vizier or something. Or something, right? But also, you said you would give him all the time he needs. Like, chill. <laughs> the genie has a great line in that scene where he's like, he's like doing a bunch of Robin Williams stuff to basically like distract her and cheer her up. And there's a bit where he said where he says something about like having everything you need for the wedding except the groom. And, and she gets so sad at that. He's like, it's a joke. I do that. It's, he And he looks so mad about it. Like, we've known each <laughs> other. So Jasmine, Jasmine, we've known each other for... I know that the entire time you've known me, I've been voiced by Dan Castellaneta, but we've known each other for about two or three seasons. You should have this down. That that absolutely broke me because I thought he was going to backtrack like oh too soon or something. <laughs> no, but it's <laughs> he he just he does like a million bits, uh, tons of impressions that honestly aren't the best Robin Williams has ever done. Um, Pretty hit and miss. Um, I'm also even at my pretty youthful age. I am not, or e- even am I not, not entirely useful age. I mean, I am not old enough to get most of these impressions. They, there are some wild impressions in there that like there are some swings. Like, who are these for? Like, I have to imagine that he's playing like the room, right? Like, this is for the guys in the recording studio. This is for like the voice director. If he can get the voice director to crack, then it was a good impression. But yeah, like, I don't need to see a fucking Bing Crosby and Bob Hope bit, like, in my children's movie. It's very weird. It's very weird. Um, the only thing that at all keeps it afloat is just the fact that he keeps doing them. Yeah. It's, it, it, and it's kind of, in that way, like, peak Robin Williams. It's <laughs> like, if you're, not, if you're not laughing at a Robin Williams bit, you, you'll probably laugh at the next one or the one after it. Like, yeah. Like, just... Until you get one that you're like, ha ha ha. But it's like, it's also just like not his best stuff. You're right. No, it's, it's it's also, I think a little too, it gets a little too Looney Tunes towards the end of it. I don't know. It's, it's just a weird, it's, it's just, it's, it's so much. And it's so middling that I, I, I got to the point where I was like, ah, this is, this is the problem of getting Robin Williams back is. They, they keep. They keep putting in more Robin Williams. Yeah, I was gonna say we can't we can't cut any of this, but also we can't ask <laughs> can't him. We can't ask him to tone it down. We can't ask him to ramp it up. We just gotta let him go because if we like if we tickle that dragon even a little bit and he's gone, like he walks out, like we already told the other guy that he wasn't gonna do it. 
this is another scene where it feels like even more on the other side, they're just so psyched to get Robin Williams back. They're just like, he'll make this movie. Just put as much of him in as you can. But they refuse to let him be in the serious scenes, which seems wild. Yeah. Like the scenes where the G, the character, would be useful. Like the one that Aladdin's doing right now. And so Aladdin is is uh, s- uh, sneaking, stalking, following, trailing. Sure. All those things. The, the, the 40 Thieves. They got a pretty good, I mean, as far as as redoing the whole open sesame Alibaba and the 40 Thieves thing goes, they got a pretty good version of it with the, uh, where they like folded a Moses thing, where the sea parts as the cave rises. Definitely watched King of, uh, Prince of Egypt, though, like, <laughs> they... <laughs> They just had it on the background. The the colors they started drawing, and they're like, "Uh oh." The the colors that they chose, and like the effects that they did for that, I was like, "Oh man, come on, guys, you're you're Disney. You gotta do you gotta do your own whoa, thing." Whoa, 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 whoa! They're Disney home fit. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough, but <laughs> it's. It's wild to me. It's wild to me that like, and to be fair, that scene in Prince of Egypt like rocks hard. So if you have to do the mini version of it, like go for it. But we, at this point, we finally get to officially meet Kasim, I think. Voiced by known piece of shit and dumb idiot, John Reese davies who does a pretty good performance in this, I think. Well, he does fine. Here's the thing. Here's the thing I feel like we need to mention and... You might want to mention it. I don't know who wants to be the one to say it. Kazim is hot. He's a daddy. It's a little weird. Here's the thing. I get why people like this guy. He's got a flair for the dramatic. He's got he's got the Gimli voice, which I, I, I like. You know the 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 performance is like really bombastic. He's very mm-hmm. charming. I get why people like this guy. Here's the thing, though. Right is. He's a sugar trap. Okay. Because yeah. Because he's not he's not going to be your dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's not going to be your dad. <laughs> and he he would probably be a great dad, but he won't. I mean, if he could convince not to Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if you not to get up and leave, <laughs> if you could convince him to actually show up to work, I'm sure he'd do a great job. <laughs> if you could convince him that that being a dad is the greatest heist of all. This is this motherfucker does like the ultimate went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. Oh my god! Because he explains to it's, oh I'm sorry we I, we I guess we need to explain that he's the king of the thieves. They're the same guy. <laughs> the the other thieves respect him except for Sal- Saluk who hates him because he wants to be in charge. Yeah, it seems like they have, like, a sort of rival rivalry, like, thief politics thing going on. <laughs> to the point that Saluk is like, ah, I see your son's here. We're gonna kill him for trespassing. And then, Kasim, so that he doesn't lose face, I guess, or maybe, to be fair, lose the title and end up killed himself, decides that the way to deal with this is to say, no, 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 we'll do the thing. That we do for new thieves, which is he takes the challenge, and if he dies, then he's out, and if he kills the other guy, then he's in. And Saluk's like, cool, I'm gonna kill your son. Not, probably not seeing that this is a, I was gonna say win-win. It's not a win-win. Kasim does not want Aladdin to die. But he has stacked it in a way that it's like, either this awful thing happens or like this pretty great thing happens. This is, and this is the problem with this motherfucker, right? Is like his plans are bad. His plans are, are so all or nothing, right? Like I can't just sneak in there and steal this scepter from an unguarded, (laughs) unwatched room because that, because that's, that's too much. That's too easy for me. I'm not going to get the fucking thrill. Instead, we have to stampede elephants and I'm going to sneak in to steal this stuff. He couldn't, like, forge an invitation. Everybody was there. They said in the song that, like, paupers and princes were there. Like, they said everyone's invited to this thing. And he can't get an invitation? Excuse me? Right? 
He just seems to walk in. He could even bring a fake scepter. Do you know what he has? Is he has a lot of gold. He could just do this. But no. Every plan that he makes has to be all or nothing. I can't just... Because he clearly has a lot of sway with the other thieves. He could have pushed the conversation into like a... Like a we're going to use him, we're going to test him in like a new, uh, a, a hit new heist or something. Instead, he's like, he could have just argued with Saluk. He, he could have been like, it's not mercy to not kill my son. It's me making the decision to not kill my son. Like, he's the king of thieves. Are you telling me that he cannot make the decision not to kill his own son? Apparently, kings in this fucking universe are, their hands are just tied. They can't, <laughs> they can't actually do anything. Okay. I was on the Sultan's side in that scene. <laughs> I know. I, I get you. I get what you're saying. But he is an absolute monarch. Fuck you. Your hands are tied. Absolutely. You could do something <laughs> about say, this. We, we, gotta, we, could, we could talk about that, but I don't want to jump ahead to that. So, so <laughs> Aladdin, Aladdin fights Saluk while his dad seemingly cannot get close enough to the fight to, to see what's going on. The King of Thieves doesn't even get a good seat. God, you can't even get front row seats as the King of Thieves. What are the benefits then? Is it just the cool title? I mean, he's got like a robe. That's so true. That's nice something. Uh, he's got that like uh, Reed Richards graying on the sides. Do you think maybe he got that from being the King of Thieves? Or is that just administration yeah, that's work? What happens. <laughs> no, it's there's like an orb that he has to touch. He's also got a cool golden chip in the basement. I don't I see here's the thing. I think he already had that. Do you think that he moved the 40 thieves into his hideout? Yes. Is that what happened? I think that was the deal. That sounds that sounds possible actually. But if that's the reason why he had that giant gold boat, then I am even more furious with him for the line that he says. But I want to, we got to get through the fight first. You can't keep jumping ahead. This fight is good. I like it. It's very artistic. It's very, we can't choreograph this. So we're just going to do like a lot of cuts, but it's fun. There were, there were bits where it was sort of like the Lion King fight. Yes, absolutely. Scar versus Simba. There was a bit that I really enjoyed. And I kind of wish that Disney movies had done stuff like this more often. There's a bit where Aladdin gets cut in the arm. But they can't show blood. So instead, there's like this pink lightning flash. And immediately I was like, oh, he got cut in the arm. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that was, that was great. I didn't, I, I hadn't like even thought that that could be like a way to visually tell that without showing blood and getting rid of your G rating, you know? And this is, and this is a pretty, there, there is like a moment in this movie where I was like, man, this could go either way. Mm-hmm. It's dynamic. Aladdin gets thrown off a cliff. He gets thrown off a cliff. And at this point, I was like, damn, this movie's going to take a turn. But then Saluk, who has seen, I assume, a lot of Disney movies is like, nah, no body, no crime. I got to jump down there and finish (laughs) him off. Saluk is so Kazim makes these really wild plans. But Saluk's plans are even wilder. When you throw somebody off a cliff, take the win. Don't also jump off the cliff. He's out. (laughs) And Saluk will continue with his ideas of being the craziest and least effective Disney villain. This is an issue with this movie that I think we can say here, which is that the primary dramatic drive of this movie is Aladdin's tumultuous relationship with his father. You don't really need all this other stuff. To the point where I wondered, like, could a movie be made where his dad, where they have this relationship and his dad is just the villain? Like, even, like, and could you could you still get to the same end point at that? Where, like, they like each other, <laughs> and all, but, like, they're clearly not going to be in each other's lives at all? <laughs> like, I, I think so. I, I was kind of curious about that, because Saluk is really underwhelming, and I hated how much they had to tell me that, don't worry, because seems... A cool guy <laughs> and it's like we know he's not uh, aladdin gets the gets the upper hand here on the cliffside and manages to throw saluk into the waters below it was it was such a bad move to chase aladdin down there aladdin is so skinny and he has spent his whole life just climbing shit this is his 
his arena. You're in his turf now. And Saluk is this big, beefy jerk, and all he can do is punch. He falls down immediately. So, Saluk looks like, I'm so sorry, I just realized, Saluk looks like one of the Huns from Mulan. Uh, yeah, he, it, he does. He, he, if you threw a fur on him, you could pass him as, um, I can't think of his name now. Sean Yu? Sher Khan? No, that's the tiger. <laughs> Sher Khan. <laughs> you can pass him as Sher Khan. Sher Khan. Um, oh god, what is his name? I, th- I think it is Sean Yu. The warrior at the pass. <laughs> This movie has has a the warrior at the pass moment, which is kind of cool. I fucking love the last 10 minutes of this movie are kind of awesome, um, but we'll get there. Um, Once they get to the big turtle, it's great. Oh, uh, I was like, I was thinking even a little bit before that. God, that's right. I forgot that we get we get we get to go to fucking Discworld Atlantis in this movie. Um, <laughs> it's kind of what happens. So Aladdin is now one of the 40 thieves. A lifetime membership. Apparently, a again, lifetime membership. Genu- again, through this song, I was still like, okay, so is it a curse? But no, again, it's is, just- <laughs> is it a curse? No, it's just a curse in that none of these people are going to let him not be one of the forty thieves anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh, you gotta wonder what they could do if he just went back home. He and Gago and Abu are like thrown around. They get a terrible song sung to them. It's this is one of the okayer songs, but that's the problem. <laughs> Welcome to the forty thieves. It's, it's, it's maybe. Actually, one of the best songs. I kind of like it. I think it's it doesn't hit as good as the tavern song in Tangled, right? That that was, I think, my problem is that all the songs in this felt too much like other Disney songs. Yeah, and I was like, they should have just gotten Alan Menken to write the music for this. There's even uh, there's a there's even a moment party. There's a song that Aladdin and Jasmine sing when Aladdin decides that he's going to go look for his dad. It's a it's fine. It it does the thing that I like where they're both singing kind of past each other. I don't like how there gets to a point where Aladdin is just kind of talking. That that was the bit where it started to irritate me. No, for sure. I I, I agree, but it it's one of those things where I was like, "Ugh, like this is you, you, they have such good ideas for songs, but they don't have the like lyricism or composition to like hit the ball where it needs to go. Uh, Kasim is uh, ecstatic that Aladdin has won. Yeah, he's thrilled. His son didn't die. And Iago is so horny for this guy. Yeah, Iago's on board. He is like, he's like, I have been, I've been looking for someone to replace <laughs> like my last relationship right he is rebounding so hard he's so much better fit for Kasim than aladdin as a sidekick absolutely because they're gonna mesh they could in fact by the end of this movie it so felt like they were trying to set off a spinoff with Kasim and yago i know they were it but like the way that it kind of ends on them. It ends. <laughs> literally like, the last shot of the movie is both of them being like, oh, we're going to do so many crimes together. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> In what world? It was, it, it was kind of great. I, was, I, I would watch that sort of uh, Breaking Bad spinoff version of Aladdin. <laughs> the, the Better Call Saul of the Aladdin universe. So now is when we get the boat. Now is when Kasim tells Aladdin about his like, great plan his basically one last score type thing Alan's like i want you to come to my wedding and Kasim's like eh, let me tell you about this boat <laughs> this is <sighs> this is the most infuriating thing the reason Kasim abandoned aladdin's mom i assume pretty soon after after she got pregnant was because he wanted to get enough money steal enough money get a big enough score that he could support his wife and oncoming son so that they wouldn't have to live the life of a street rat like he did growing up and he says he didn't want to come back a failure and then in the most inf- maybe the second most infuriating line in this little speech of his he says um i came back to agrabah one night but i couldn't find you and it's like one night one night agrabah dude <laughs> this place it is, is huge. the biggest city in the f- fictional desert of wherever this takes place it's so big also it's your fucking son dude like my look around guy? a little bit ask around it's so it's so it's so irritating pisses me off and aladdin's mad too and he's like he tells me he should have left and all this stuff and 
Kasim in the most, the most infuriating line. It's like, you don't know what it's like to grow up with, to have nothing. And while he's saying this, he is standing above the golden ass a boat go- a in solid his gold. This motherfucker found a solid gold boat. And is telling this to the son he abandoned. He never knew. <laughs> he Here's the thing. Aladdin doesn't know this man. This guy's a fucking stranger to him. If I walked up to my ostensible father and he was like, Oh, well, you know, I I needed, I just, I didn't want to come back a failure. Next thing I knew, the weeks turned to years. I would have, I would have stabbed him with his own fucking knife. You can die on this solid gold boat you never fucking used to raise me, asshole. Seriously, all you have to do is swim down and cut off some boat bit. Like, how much do you think a solid gold rope goes for? Not nothing, right? I bet a lot. I bet it I bet it goes for enough to find your son. <laughs> to hire somebody to find your son. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, Kasim's a piece of shit. Aladdin still invites him to the wedding, but can't convince him to take the the carpet so they go by a horse. Which I don't know why is important. I guess just to just to show that they are moving more slowly than if they were on the carpet. It seems it seems like a really weird thing to just say, but whatever. It's weird to me because at one point before Aladdin leaves, he's like, I promise I'll be back in time for the wedding. Like, dude, by definition, like the <laughs> day you get back is going to be the day before the wedding. Like, Right. Well, you, I'll promise I'll be back in time before the wedding. Well, I wasn't going to have it without you. you. Yeah, like we're not. I'm not just going to find some other guy if you don't show up. That's not what's at stake here. <laughs> Kasim also has like the fucking like nerve to be like horses were good enough for me and for my father and my father's father. All right, cool, dude. I'm fucking so glad you could <laughs> you could have told me this when I was five. But guess what? I'm tw- I'm uh, ostensibly in my twenties now. I have a magic carpet. I never had a horse. Guess what, Dad? I yeah, I was gonna say I never had a horse. I got a magic carpet because it was fucking free. <laughs> <laughs> it came with the genie. <laughs> genie fuck this fucking guy it was one of the two things i was allowed to touch in a cave that you would have died in oh oh you know he would have died in it (laughs) immediately abu disappears at this point in the movie he's not gonna come back i think for the rest of the film is that true gosh i didn't even notice i was too busy suddenly noticing that raja had been in the entire (laughs) oh yo they brought they raja was like not in the last movie really and he's not in this one and when he shows up for the second wedding i almost lost my shit i was like yo i was like halfway through this movie i was suddenly like wait did raja die i (laughs) is there like a lost episode where raja dies oh my god like (laughs) um legit (laughs) Because because we see the Sultan so much and like the in like the, there's a party in here in Agraba music mm-hmm. and he doesn't say a goddamn word for all of it. I genuinely was like, oh my god, did this voice actor die? Did or oh I guess god. did the second voice actor that they got to voice the Sultan die? Because he's not saying anything. And then like as soon as I wrote that note, he was like, Aladdin, my boy, and I was like, oh, all right, cool, we're good. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I didn't notice that, that Abu disappeared, but Abu is a less important sidekick character when the, when it's about, like, Aladdin and his dad. And suddenly Yago becomes the most important sidekick character because he is basically Kasim's, like, the devil on Kasim's shoulder. Oh, man, he is, he is abs, he, but at, like, the moment Aladdin is, like, done inviting him to the wedding, Yago's like, listen, that scepter's still there. Sorry, this is important. Kasim does not want to go to the wedding. Oh, that's right. He's he's going to say no. Right. He's like, I don't know if he's afraid of disappointing his son, or if he just, like, doesn't believe he can, or if he's just freaked out about the idea of going to a place where so many people might recognize him. But Yago convinces him by telling him the scepter's still there and they can get the ultimate treasure. That's why he's going. And it sucks. God, I get why people like this guy so much. Like, but also I need everybody to know, anybody who is horny for this man to know, he's not going to be your dad. (laughs) He's not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I am disappointed in anybody who finds this man hot. Like, I get why you got a problem. <laughs> like, I mean, from a character design perspective, he's he's fine. Yeah, he's 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 well designed. Absolutely. The the personality, though, 
Like, it's so much. And ev- at every moment, this character, like, makes the worst possible choice. It, he, he's, like, he's constantly doubling down on being a piece of shit. He never really gets that bit of redemption. No. It's just Aladdin keeps, like, letting him get away with stuff because, like, the alternative is not having a father. And, like, there is something there if it wasn't painted as, like, pretty much entirely good. <laughs> You know? Yeah, there are a lot of moments where Aladdin's choices, I, I can just forget this guy. And like, I feel like he should, he probably could have taken that one. There were a couple times where he should have taken that choice. Yeah, but but then it gets to a point where the choice is, am I going to kill my own dad? And it's like, all right, I get it. You can't. Nobody wants to be the guy that killed their own dad, regardless of how much of a piece of shit he is. So they get back to the castle. And whatever lessons Aladdin might have learned in the last two movies, throw them out the window because immediately they lie. Yeah, it's a little weird. I thought he was going to tell Jasmine. At like, least, I, I feel right? Like she should have been in on it, but he didn't. He, j- he basically told them what the Oracle told him because- that's what they already knew. So he just like confirmed what the Oracle said. And the genie's very excited. The genie has, uh, I think the second not terrible song, <laughs> the second and last not terrible song in the movie that I feel like is almost, it's almost pretty like psychological because like here's Kazim who doesn't, is kind of afraid of this whole family bonding thing. And here's the genie forcing himself in this relationship, which is a big genie. I wish there was more emotional bite to it. Like you said, I wish they had dived in a little bit more into like Genie being kind of Aladdin's weird parental figure. I did like the song. It has a lot of good, it has a lot of good like little lines in it. I didn't write any of them down because I think it it went by a little too fast. At this point, we find out that Saluk lives. (laughs) How do we find out that Saluk lives? (laughs) <laughs> Saluk lives. In a in a scene that again that really does feel like it came out of the Simpsons. <laughs> he beats up two sharks and walks out of the water. Like the fucking Terminator. I really enjoyed that, but I also kind of wish that this is a weird thing for me. I wish that I had seen there were sharks in the water before. So I would feel more set up for him beating up some sharks. Oh, man. It, it, it is such a wild way. And then we don't even get like he walks out of the water like the Terminator and then is magically ends up in in Agrabah where he snitches to the captain of the guard. He tells him he tells him he tells him everything. He tells him how to get into the hideout that the king of thieves will be there. It'll be an easy score. Which is it's fucking wild to me. Okay, so this is the thing. I think that he and Kasim are more similar than either of them realize because this is such an all or nothing plan. Right? Because his end game is to become leader of the 40 thieves. But his first move is to betray the 40 thieves and get most to all of them captured. The only ones who don't get captured are are like the racist seven. All of the nameless thieves get captured. We we never get resolution on those guys. So I have to assume they do just get executed. Like we don't need the Sultan's approval for these guys. The Sultan did say that Kasim was going to be in prison for life. So presumably... They're also going to be in prison for life. But yes, we don't get like a bow on that. (laughs) That's just the movie removing these characters for us. 33 33 of the thieves gone out of the picture. Um, Wait, no, it can't be 43, did you say? 33. 33? That seems like a lot. Okay, whatever. Oh, wait, I guess it's. Oh, because there are 40 of them. Right. Yeah, there's 40 of them. I think it's actually. Did you remove Kasim? And I think it's. 31. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. So 31 of the 40 thieves are just (coughs) Razul aiming for a promotion. I really don't know what his end game for this is. So here's here's what's irritating is he doesn't know that Kasim is going to come back with the hand of Midas or the, the, the Oracle to get to the hand of Midas. And the reason that is irritating is because it means he just doesn't have a plan. It means that his entire plan was just getting control of the what was left of the 40 the, thieves. Yeah, the seven thieves. And then nothing. And then profit, question mark, question mark? Right, he just wanted to be in control. He wanted to be able to kill again after Kasim had said no killing. That's basically his thing. It wasn't even no killing. It was no killing of 
innocents, which means no harming like, the innocent. Yeah, yeah, guards are fair game. You can kill the Absolutely. shit out of those guys. Have you met the guards in Aladdin? They are the most evil coded characters who, for some reason, do not end up being real villains. With the exception of maybe horses. I think horses in the Aladdin universe, for some reason, are <laughs> all possessed by Satan. Like, whether a good guy or a bad guy is riding them, like, these mo- these things look like monsters. They're like, their like, eyes are always red. It's weird. Kasim has no fucking chill and goes to steal the oracle. Immediately. Immediately. Like, not even after the wedding. Like, he doesn't even hang around that You long. could wait till the reception, my dude. Like... That's one of the things that tells you, like, okay, well, he's not here for his son. He just immediately went for the Oracle. There is a deep, deep implication that if he had gotten away with it, he just wouldn't have been at the wedding, right? Aladdin would... Right, because he's... Because the wedding is going on while he's stealing it. It would have been like that fucking scene in that Austin Powers movie where he's like, and I'd like to thank my dad. And then the chair's empty. Like, oh, no. What a weird reference that I just made. (laughs) Yeah, that was wild. (laughs) So the guards catch him because they heard from Rizal that he is the guy. So they catch him and bring him to the wedding, which seems rude. But again, uh, sorry, Rizul's the guard. But again, Rizul just wants to ruin Aladdin's life. Oh, like, absolutely. That's his thing. He is absolutely going to kick down the door of this wedding and be like, your dad's a criminal idiot. R- Razul has like, not only does he have no, like he doesn't have the ability to like tone it down a notch. He also doesn't really understand like the concept of job security. Like, this guy's going to be sultan one day, dude. Turn it down to at least an eight and you might get to not immediately get fired, right? Like Seriously. I, I assume that the only reason you still had this job is because the sultan is still the sultan. But as soon as that old man kicks it, who knows what a la- That genie can do <laughs> so many things to your life and body that aren't killing you like you should be surprised what you could live through dude like here's the thing it's not only aladdin do you think jasmine would keep putting up with this shit oh absolutely she still is she she's got a long memory she remembers what you did with fucking jafar in those two movies she has gotten very punchy in this movie and by that i mean she physically punches a lot of people and they go down hard (laughs) there (laughs) there is a moment in this movie where jasmine takes on six of the seven (laughs) thieves Starts wailing on him. She doesn't even have her fucking tiger, which again, she has. She has. Anyway, this dumb idiot breaks this other dumb idiot to the wedding. And Aladdin's like, I can't believe you. And Aurel's like, Aladdin, what's going on? <laughs> I I can believe you, Razul. This is exactly the kind of shit you do. But <laughs> God damn it, Dad. <laughs> you serious? And he's got to be like, well, here's the thing. He's the king of thieves. And let's talk about this scene now, because I did want to talk about it. Because uh, Cheney also brought up she hated that the sultan said, it's out of my hands. Oh, the only thing I can do is sentence this man to life in prison. Like, I can't do anything else in this situation. And yes, you're right. It's absurd. However, I was sitting there like, you know what? If somebody drives elephants through your daughter's wedding, the only thing you could do is throw them in prison forever. The fact that he did not have him executed shows how merciful the sultan is. I mean, okay, but the the sultan could, I don't know. Elephants through the wedding. One elephant. I didn't see any other ones. There were (laughs) so many people there that probably didn't die, but only because there's a genie. He he, he ruined all of the relations with elephants. Every neighboring country, maybe forever. And also, to top it off, the princess's wedding. (laughs) This guy needs to be in prison. Fair enough. And then Aladdin's like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go break him out. Uh, Which is, I mean, I really, I kind of like it. It's such a bad idea. It is my favorite part of the movie because it shows how much smarter Aladdin is than his dad. Oh my god, yeah. It's, it also, it has some kind, it has this kind of, like, broken nobility about it. Like, Aladdin feels like he has to go save his dad because 
he does not want his dad to be in prison forever. But also, he has already made the decision never to see him again. Right, which which I think is metal as shit. Right. So he gets uh, he gets the genie to make him uh, King of Thieves cloak so he can break his dad out of prison and nobody will know it was him. Fucking solid. Pretty good. Really good. You know that mask is going to fall down, though. I mean, obviously. It has to. He goes in and his dad appears to be in the same prison cell that Aladdin had been in in the first movie. <laughs> And I was just thinking, man, it's really easy to break out of here, actually. Yeah, actually. I, there, at one point, one of the guards is like, no one could have escaped from that cell. It's like, dude, I'm pretty sure at least three people at least three people have escaped from this cell. Like, Actually, maybe they haven't, because I'm trying to figure out, did the guards know that Jafar was in there? <laughs> just, like, doing Jafar shit? Did they just assume that Aladdin disappeared because of something Jafar did? Because <laughs> they were, like, subservient to him. It's like a sting operation. We're just going to let the vizier have one of the prisoners. Like, the sultan doesn't actually care. He's not going to miss one. He, Jafar probably made a lot of those decisions. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Kasim and Yago are both in there. We kind of glanced over this, but this is apparently Yago's third strike. I have to assume that this is probably actually his, like, fifth strike, but... Who's counting? I, I do think it's one of those things where it's like, listen, man, we've got we've let you get away with it all those other times, but you did get caught alongside the King of Thieves, dude. Like, right, this is it. <laughs> that's the big one. Aladdin breaks them out. He has a line here. Mm-hmm. So the Aladdin's plan is I'm going to be running around dressed up as you. They're going to be chasing me and you can just get the fuck out of here and you can never come back and I never have to see you again. Fuck you. You're not my real dad. He doesn't say those last two things, but he basically says those last two things. Iago and Kasim book it. Kasim says, you can't do this. They'll they'll punish you for it. And Aladdin says, they can't catch me. And I, I was so wait I was on the edge of my seat expecting him to say, I'm one step ahead of him. That would have been such a good like, oh, hey, do you remember that movie that everyone likes? <laughs> uh, but they didn't do it. They didn't commit. So Aladdin leads them on a pretty good chase. I don't even know how Rizal got him. You, you know, Krog pulling down the uh, yeah the thing by all accounts. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, he he somehow magically ends up on the exact parapet he needs to be on. I could have sworn he was looking for him on a different parapet. Yo, I legit thought he was like. Right behind the other two guys, I guess not. Right. Um, but he get he gets there. He grabs him. He sees his face, and then Aladdin's dad is there, braining him, uh, which is great. Rizal deserves more of that. Kasim and Aladdin run off. They're on horseback, and they stop at it like at like in like a canyon pass. And Kasim's like, "Look what I got! It's the scepter." <laughs> Oh my god. And this is, I have to imagine that this is like the thing that really, like the straw that broke Aladdin's back because he's like, I cannot believe that you did this. Here's the thing. If you think about the timeline here, that means that Kasim, instead of running away when Aladdin freed him, went to go get the scepter and just happened by chance. By chance. To save Aladdin, to like be in the right place to save Aladdin. He wasn't like following him to make sure he was okay. He had gone away to steal the scepter. And that's probably the point where Aladdin's like, actually, fuck you. <laughs> and and seems like, you have you don't have a life there anymore. Come with me, we'll have you know, unimaginable riches. And he's like, no, I'm going to like face my problems. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to my wife. Unlike somebody. Oh, man, it'd be great if he said that. And then uh, Kasim would have been like, well, you're not technically married yet. <laughs> Aladdin does tell Yago to go with Kasim, which I I enjoyed for a couple reasons. One, it meant that Yago was gonna go with Aladdin. He, he was like gonna be like, okay, let's go back and face the music. Which shows like some growth on Yago's part. And, and Aladdin's like, oh, come on, dude. You know, you know you want to be with this guy. Go ahead. Right. Well, I was like, look, he's a bad dad to me. He could, he could be your, your weird bird dad. Yeah, you could listen. You need, you need someone who's a little less evil and a little more chaotic neutral in your life. <laughs> like, yeah. go with him. You clearly, you, you, we've had three seasons of adventures. So they go off. Uh, before, before the end of this scene, Kasim tells Iago. Because Iago's like, are you sure we can just go back to the 40 thieves? Because, like, most of them got captured. And Kasim says, they're my only family, and I can always count on them. 
And we call that dramatic irony. <laughs> this fucking idiot. Uh, Fuck it. So this movie's still going somehow. It's kind of a long movie. It doesn't feel as long as Return of Jafar, but it's longer than Return of Jafar. It's 86 minutes, which is, yeah, like I said, almost... I dream of the day we watch an 80 minute movie because it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> go by like a fucking shot of whiskey. This 86 minutes is pretty good. It's pretty good length. Like I said, does feel like like a two episode finale. Aladdin goes back home. Yeah, and he gets a slap on the wrist because obviously, <laughs> come on, right? Like what was actually Razul is hyping it up? Like yes, yes, kill him, kill him, kill him, <laughs> and, and he's like. I'm sorry, I had to do it. It's my dad. And Jess was this whole door, like nodding, like, yep, had to do it. It's your dad. I get it. I'd do the same thing for my dad. Right. Yeah. Jasmine is like really hard selling this. She is. I I have to imagine that she's like, listen, old man, the only reason you're still alive (laughs) is because I say so. Jess was pretty cool in this movie. She gets some cool stuff. She does. She gets some fun stuff. She even lies to the genie that that his dumb jokes cheered her up. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, these jokes are better than the last movie, but... But, yeah, no, of Are course. Are they good, Genie? Of course it cheered me up, Genie. Yes, you're as funny as you were three years ago, of course. <laughs> you're precisely as funny as you were when you were still in a lamp, Genie. A- <laughs> uh, <laughs> you haven't lost it. No, of course not. So as far as our protagonists are concerned their job is done yeah we we aladdin had to you know had had some growing up to do had to face the music that maybe that sometimes shitty people are shitty people and also they're not your dad (laughs) and so they're gonna get married that's it that's the end of this movie also genie i i'm pretty sure just kills razul on like (laughs) just kills him because he fires him to the moon and oh, we yeah. never see him again. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot that, yeah, this scene, Razul is, like, really, like, pinning charges on Aladdin. And Genie shows up and does the whole, I'm just, a, like, a like a southern, I'm just, like, a southern small town lawyer thing. And then explodes Razul into the fucking atmosphere. I'm pretty sure he says the line, I don't like it when tertiary characters have more lines than me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't like it when I have that many lines in, in my screen time or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and just fucking kills him. And it's like, dude, if you had dialed it back to eight, this wouldn't have happened. This is exactly what I was warning you about. Here's the thing. It's important to note that Genie can't kill anybody, which does mean that he just shot him into space and probably had to expend some magic to make that survivable. Gave him like a parachute or something. <laughs> which means Razul had to be like, oh my god, what's happening? I'm gonna die the whole time. Which would have been pretty great, actually. We should have seen that movie. Meanwhile, we didn't mention this, but uh, gosh, what the heck is his name? Saluk. Saluk does end up taking over before he thieves. He has a rough song called Are You In or Out? And it's the closest he's going to get to a villain song. That's pretty big crime, actually. Uh, it's kind of lame. If Aladdin's dad had a villain song about just, like, wanting riches, and it, like, wasn't all that evil, but it was about, like, giving into your greed, that would be pretty fun. Right. But it doesn't happen. Instead, we get this song of where Razul is singing about how he wants to be leader of the 40 thieves and then he gets to be leader of the 40 thieves that easy and so kasim gets back like oh i'm home he literally says that and everybody is being cartoonishly evil at him end of scene i don't know why they don't just kill him i think there are a couple reasons why they don't just kill him and the number one reason is I bet that his men, that some of his men kind of like it. That it might be a little bit of a hard sell, especially after they've lost so many people. For salute to for his first, first thing to be, and then we kill the, the King of Thieves. But I think the other reason is, and this is not made super clear, because nobody else knows what the or- how to use the Oracle. Because seems not just going to give it to them because the Oracle is extremely easy to use. It's That's the thing, right? <laughs> One of them could have just been like, I don't, how do you even use this thing? And she would have popped out and been like, you simply ask me one question and I give you 
one answer. And Kasim would have been like, ah, son of a bitch. But maybe Kasim had to make sure they didn't ask any questions. He was just like, fine, fine, fine. I'm captured. I'm captured. Fine. <laughs> the only way to use the Oracle is to go out on a boat deep in the ocean. You got to keep rowing long enough for Iago to slip free and then ask the question. That seems to be what he said. That's the only explanation for the next scene where that happens. And yeah, right. <laughs> Can you please <laughs> phrase all your questions in the form of answers while we're doing this, by the way? No reason, no reason, <laughs> yes. no reason, no reason. So Iago gets free. Kasim asks the Oracle where the hand of Midas is. And the Oracle just shines a fucking light on it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And like, why couldn't you do this for Aladdin? <laughs> like, clearly you can. This is apparently an answer to the question. Is I'll just shine a big light on it. The Oracle likes to mix stuff up. It's possible that the Oracle... No, I take this back. It's not possible. It is almost certain that the Oracle is directly related to this temple somehow. Because the, or the there are, are like the sh- there there's like the shape of the oracle like carved into it in places the shape of the stick so it's possible that the oracle exists yeah the oracle can answer any question but actually the reason the oracle exists is to lead people to this treasure yeah to the hand of Midas which is um, not quite as dangerous as it was in the Ryan North comic the Midas Flesh. No. But still pretty dangerous. St- we'll, we'll get to the hand of Midas. Yeah. <laughs> Iago gets back to Agrabah and is like, Aladdin, I'm so sorry, but your dad has fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know it's a surprise. You're shocked. I know you're shocked, but your dad, he messed up. <laughs> Again. Also, Saluk is still alive, a, se- some, a thing that is somehow still a secret. There was probably a bit where Aladdin had to come clean just a little bit more. Where after Yago says Saluk is still alive, he probably would be like, oh, yeah. Um, also, I killed somebody. Uh, turns out they're alive. And that's great because that's been eaten at me. But I did. <laughs> I was going to hold on to that for probably another week before I told you guys. But I... Did not kill somebody, but I thought I did. (laughs) But I thought I did. I was planning on just waking up screaming for a couple of nights before it came out. Surely the genie has killed somebody. The genie can't kill people. No, well, no, not like by magic, but like, I, I have to imagine that the genie has like worked with people who, because of their wishes, ended up dying. That's like a thing, right? Hmm, I don't know. That's a good question. But that's, that, I guess that's poetic justice. Right, right. The genie has definitely, if not been the cause of stuff, at least been like privy to like deaths, right? Because yeah. he's, so many people have had to have that lamp. Uh, but so far, and I haven't seen the Aladdin TV series, but so far as I know, the only Aladdin character with a body count is Iago. Really? Uh, Well, I mean, he killed Jafar. Oh, that's right. And I don't think anybody else is like straight up like off the person. I mean, the Sultan apparently does have people executed. So those are on him. I know that he's not doing them, but that's on him. uh, That is the big question about state executions. That's maybe a bit much to get into. No, it's on. It's when you're an, again, when you're a hereditary absolute monarch, it's on you. (laughs) My hands are tied. They have to be executed. Yeah, I bet you tell that to everybody. This, <laughs> this is uh, this is maybe getting a little too philosophical and maybe just a bit too dark. Would you say that the people that Jafar killed, is that on the Sultan? Like, yeah, right? Because he would have used the Sultan's power. It's tough because the Sultan, Jafar was definitely hypnotizing the Sultan. I think those are on Jafar because he's he's the one with absolute power in that scenario. Right, right, that's fair. But I, at the same time, you could just not have an evil vizier. <laughs> have you considered? Maybe you can't, I guess. Maybe <laughs> I would. I would just not have an evil one. I'd have a good one. Maybe that's why Aladdin didn't take the job. He's like, I don't think I could grow that evil beard. Like, I don't. I don't, I just don't want a goatee. I don't think it will look good on my face. I'm not sure I could be that evil, Sultan. Like, I know you really want the, the like, second opinion on stuff, but that's pretty evil. Yeah, why don't you just ask the genie? Like, he's weird. <laughs> he's already got a goatee, kind of. Yeah. I mean, you can hardly tell because his face is so, like, jaw-heavy. But, but it's there. What were we talking about? 
what's happening in this movie? Oh, everybody hops on the carpet. Everybody this time. Yeah, well, not, not the Sultan. Not just like, <laughs> right, but not just like tiger. Aladdin and Iago and maybe Abu. But like, Jasmine's like, every time I leave Aladdin alone, he fucking gets somebody killed. And then commits a major crime. I, <laughs> I, I think I think this is a little deeper than that. I think this is Jasmine being like, you know what? I don't want Aladdin's dad to fuck him over again. <laughs> oh, maybe. Either way, I was like, yeah, absolutely. You have to keep it up. Jasmine, there. you should have been going this whole time. They get to this island. We didn't really talk about this, but the backgrounds in this movie are like really good. Hand painted. We're still in the era of like backgrounds being hand painted and they look amazing. They this this turtle does straight up look like something out of like a Discworld cover. The I think the palace looks really good when they decide to do it. Uh, I realize it spends most of the time being crumbled, but like parts of the palace look really good. But then when we get to this temple, it looks like I just kept thinking like I would want to like play this in a video game. Right? Like, I want to, like, explore this temple. This is some Nathan Drake shit. Right. I do have one issue with this temple. Why is it Egyptian? I also had that thought because Midas is Greek. He's a Greek dude. Now, I suppose it is possible. Now, also, this is important. Is it called the Hand of Midas because it turns things into gold? Or, in this version of the universe, did the Hand of Midas become gold and he can touch things with it to make them gold i don't know right at, but at the end of the day like i i just i don't understand why it's egyptian okay well here's here's what i'm saying if it is called the hand of midas because it turns stuff into gold maybe it's actually an egyptian artifact they called it something else but because of the story of king midas people are calling it the hand of midas I get, I get what you're saying. I know it's not great. I'm just giving you something. No, I, I, I don't want something. I want it to be Greek because it should be Greek because it's, they call it the hand of Midas. I am, oh, I, I bet if you looked, there is a fucking like story. One of the 1001 Arabian nights somewhere of a guy who can turn shit to gold. That isn't Midas. But like this, this is one of like the biggest myths in Greek like mythology also he was kind of a real dude yeah he had those donkey ears from a place in the mediterranean which the like arabic world has access to i don't know why it's egyptian it 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 every time i saw like egyptian writing and stuff i i just this like little part in the back of my brain would be like oh this looks nice why is it fucking egyptian though they're they do walk by what appears to be like a sphinx head basically it's pretty Egyptian. I did like the big, solid gold floating hand. I thought that was rad. It's great because I, I love how this temple was clearly built just to keep this thing in here. Or at least this room was with the floating hand so nothing can touch it. Even if like the hand falls onto this gold hand, the hand's already gold and it's not touching anything. The gold's not going to spread anywhere. It's fine. I got very mad at Kasim because the first thing he did when he grabbed this thing was touch it to the temple and make the whole temple made of gold. And I was like, it's floating on the back of the turtle, man. Dude, it's going to get that heavy. that is so fucked that you would fuck up this turtle like this. So they get to this temple. There's like a fight, but it's like... We got like 10 minutes left in the movie. It's not going to be a major fight. I, I like the resolution to the fight. Never in my life have I wished that a villain got the same level of attention as the guy who turned into a blue crystal monster from Atlantis. I was expecting it here, but he just turns mm. to gold. He it's it's really it's actually kind of funny. Aladdin's like, I can take care of this guy. I've done it before. And because he's like, but you're not alone anymore. And he throws the hand, and this fucking idiot catches it. Now, to be fair to this fucking idiot, he doesn't have a cool cape that he can turn to gold to catch it. He should still be dodging out of the way. Here's here's the thing. He's not an idiot because he caught it, Andy. He's an idiot because it takes, like, another 20 seconds for him to start turning to gold, and he does not put it down at that amount of time. Oh, right, absolutely. <laughs> He's still holding on to it. 
I had thought that this, that they lost the hand of Midas when Salute turned to gold and he like dragged it down to the water, but they don't. They still get to like run away with it. And then after he gets out of the safe place, uh-huh. he gets out of the safe place that he was because he was like, oh, I'm no, this stupid thing. You can't, Bottle no, of the ocean. you can't take this from me because this is the greatest line in the history right, of cinema, me. Tony. <laughs> Hit me. Fucking Shakespeare. Shakespeare walked so that Disney's Aladdin, King of Thieves, could run. Because Kasim, Aladdin tells his dad, I guess you got it. The ultimate treasure. <laughs> and Kasim says, word for word, I wrote it down. No. This wretched thing almost cost me the ultimate treasure. It's you, son. You are my ultimate treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I... I had to I had to interrupt. <laughs> I had to go get <laughs> my, my, my loving partner from whatever they were doing at the time and be like you have to listen to this shit. <laughs> this is amazing. I don't know why, but I suddenly pictured Famous like doing surgery. <laughs> <laughs> And you just like walking in. <laughs> with, with, you I'll, need to know what happens. I'll, uh, sorry, the, the king of thieves. I know, I know you're, I know you're elbow deep in this guy, in this guy's pancreas. But I have Aladdin, <laughs> King of Thieves, here on my iPhone, and you need to see it. I'll put on the scrubs and the protective gear later. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. It's such a bad line. It might be my new favorite. It's salt <laughs> line. No, it's salt is a better line. No, it's salt is better, and I'm. It's it's it's. But this one, it just it hit me. It hit me in just the right way. I think. <laughs> it's salt is such a necessary line for that scene because otherwise you'd be like, "What's happening here?" <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's very stupid I, in universe, I, this this line is stupid in and out of universe. And out of universe, I I have to imagine that they like. They screened this and someone was like, well, how are the kids going to know what he's talking about when he says, <laughs> you, son, my son. So he throws the stupid thing that they worked so damn hard to get. Here's the thing. Aladdin and Jasmine and everybody were like down to get this thing because they're here now. Like they were going to go get it because I imagine this is just what they do. They like go on adventures, right? Yeah, they have, like, uh, maybe that's what that room full of treasure was, was all the the shit that they got from the rest of the series. I don't know. And he was going to throw this one out. In fact, he does throw it out. And, I mean, maybe he should, because this would, like, wreck all economies ever. And then I mentioned that Yaga was the only one with a uh, body count. But Kazim goes, <laughs> goes ahead and finishes off the 40 Thieves, so his body count is eight. Eight. Which is pretty high. Pretty high. Oh, I'm sorry. I I feel like I need to explain. See, the hand touches the boat that, that the, the 40 that the, thieves are on. Well, that the seven of the 40 thieves are on. And they sink to the bottom of the ocean and die terribly. And then Genie comes out of the turtle's mouth like Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Billy. Even if they can swim. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. But also, like, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, a boat when it sinks, but... When a, when a mass that contains air goes underwater very rapidly, like this turtle does, the water gets, like, sucked in and then exploded out. So they're drowned. Like, they're gone. Yeah. There's yeah. no way yeah. these guys are surviving this. In fact, everybody is actually pretty close to dying if you take a good look at what's happening here. But it's fine because... Uh, they have a flying carpet. carpet. After we get all of this, we go back to the wedding. Finally. These two are finally getting married. Finally. Third fucking wedding. We don't even get the wedding part. They're just already kissing. They're like, we're done teasing you about this. We've been, Aladdin, we've been edging my dad about us getting married long enough. He's going to have a heart attack. (laughs) Gross. So they finally get married. Aladdin's dad technically still doesn't show up for this wedding. He is. But he might still be wanted in Agrabah. Like, fair enough. The Sultan might just capture him, might just have him captured. He probably wouldn't, 
but he might. Him and Iago tease having greater, cooler adventures. And the shopkeeper from the first movie comes back, voiced by Robin Williams, and is like, hey, that's it. That's the end of the story. There will be no more story uh, because Robin Williams ain't coming back for this for, for this franchise. So it was fine. It Yeah, it was. I think it's boring. Yeah, but like I said, it's pretty. It's way boring. Better than Return of Jafar. It doesn't have a good like moral. I but it so Return of Jafar had this bit where it tried to have these interpersonal relationships in turmoil, and this did that so much better, even if it could never quite stick the landing on it. Yeah, it. I think it's bullshit. You are not defined by a person who didn't raise you. I I think this movie could have really said something about making your own family and like building up your own person and like getting to leave behind. Bad circumstances don't make you a bad person, right? Like that's kind of the point of the original Aladdin is that despite all of the bad circumstances, Aladdin's still a good kid. And I, I genuinely don't know what this movie wants to say because it fucks it up so bad. I mean, I actually think it's pretty straightforward. I think somebody said, hey, what if we gave Aladdin a dad? And then they didn't really think of it beyond that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, again, they try to, they do try to have these interpersonal relationships. But they keep on, like, not sticking the landing. No. I, I do think that their inability to reconcile this shitty character that they made with the good ending that they want to give him Makes mm-hmm. for a more interesting story, but I don't. I don't think it's because they worked hard to make it interesting. I think it's because they just genuinely could not figure it out. They had a good idea, and they just didn't have the writing or imagination to like put it anywhere. I just didn't like that at the end. It feels like Aladdin's dad like learns this great moral, and then he immediately goes, abandons. Keeps doing so. the same shit. Yeah. And it's like, you obviously didn't learn a lesson, so why is the movie telling me you learned a lesson? I, I kind of think it would have been better if there's like a, a moment where he turns this big temple into gold and he's just like, oh, this isn't, well, this isn't fun. If you want to get rid of the hand of Midas because it made stealing too easy, it made like getting rich too easy. <laughs> he's like, this isn't what I wanted. He's sitting there just like, well, this isn't fun. Where is the stampede of elephants? <laughs> Where's the all or nothing plan? I can just turn things to gold now. This sucks. And Alan could be like, no, dad, no, that's, that was bad. Please stop doing this. He's like, no, no, you were right. I shouldn't have chased after this thing. And then he threw it in the water. Throws it into the water and is like, son, you have a happy home here. And I, I just, I, I, I refuse to learn anything. I refuse to grow as a person. Anyway, bye. But also, I'm not your dad because I didn't raise you and you don't know me and I'm a stranger. I feel like it should be mentioned that actually Razul is in the end of this movie. Is he? Is he? I see, he I, catches the bouquet. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Anyway, I would have been more entertained if, yeah, he just didn't come back. It would have been better. And the only thing Razul's marrying is the fucking dark side of the moon. Kapow. This is just going to end up being our Christmas episode. So, like, Merry Christmas, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and and absolutely. <laughs> and also, Happy New Year. This is going to be the last episode of 2021, almost certainly. We did it. <laughs> We're back. Thank you for listening to Direct to Video. VHS? VHS? Shit, did we ever introduce ourselves? Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a host on your booster. We're professionals. I've been your host, Andy Reyes. Nobody's, we're not professionals until somebody pays us. If somebody wants to pay us, we can be professionals. I would, I would like it. I would, I would like it. Um, I will tighten this shit up if somebody wants to pay us. If somebody wants to pay us, <laughs> I, I will help out more. <laughs> 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 we'll like, get a more clear recording schedule. We'll make time. I'll pu- yeah, we ty- we 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 definitely f- go like have an actual schedule again. Uh, you can find me at sparkbytrueevents.org and my Twitter at theatermats. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Royal Tanner Score Valens. You can also find me at another podcast that I do with my close friend and uh, intimate roommate. <laughs> 
Um, Mavis. Wow, it's like you're trying to figure out the worst way to describe something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you can find you can find that at timehonoredpictures.com. We have yet to, but we are in the midst of of watching. Oh, what are, what are we even watching next? I don't even remember. But we just finished Mutiny on the Bounty. Was our last episode, and that was a fucking terrible experience. It was a it was an awful time. And uh, <laughs> God, I. I I, I hope the next one's better. Mr. Deeds Goes to Washington, I think, is where, where we're doing next. Huh. Weird that you jumped to an Adam Sandler movie mm. after Mutiny on the Bounty. Not that one, then. <laughs> <laughs> A similar titled movie. Asshole. Can't believe you made me remember the movie <laughs> Mr. Deeds. <laughs> you made me remember it first. What are we doing? What are we doing next? What's next Did for us? Did we see video? Come on over to directshoot.video. We got videos we got videos we got more we got, videos, we got we got all the podcast stuff we're on spotify now i think i haven't checked up on that but i i put us on spotify i don't listen uh, to podcasts on spotify but if we are on spotify check us out there that's also that's awesome uh, and thank you to lee rosevere for his song planet e off the album trappist one unless we're doing a christmas song for this one which i might have made the executive decision to do uh in that case it'll be in the description yeah well or wouldn't it be uh oh god we, we had we had a christmas song from lee rosevier didn't yeah, we? yeah it'd probably be what is it ukulele for christmas the instrumental version something like that uh, from Lee Rosevere, and again, it'll be in the uh, in the show notes if mm-hmm. you really gotta click through. Because actually, I think that one's kind of a bop. Yeah, um, let's let's do it. Let's why not? Let's <laughs> why not? Uh, do you know what we're gonna watch next time? Because it's this next episode is a new year. Do we want to go back to an old franchise that we have yet to finish? Oh no. Do. Do you think it would be a good idea to watch whatever it is, wherever it is we are, in the Swan Princess franchise? <sighs> Fuck because me. All right, here we go. Let me let me look up the fucking names. I think we're gonna get the cat back at some point, uh, which was my whole reason for watching any of them. Where even are we? Let me see. Let me see. The last one we watched had to be a royal family tale. No, it was Princess Tomorrow Pirates Day. Fuck me, did Pirates. we really watch that one? Yeah. Hey, Andy, we did. Oh, damn. In that case, next time we're going to watch The Swan Princess Royally Undercover. Ooh, 2017. 2017, in which I believe number nine comes back. I hope so. That or there's another cat with sunglasses. <laughs> oh my goodness, the character models even. All right. We're doing it. We're back ghost of john smith i you'd be surprised that you could live through (laughs) dude i need you to know the like the depths of the world that we are entering because apparently starting at princess tomorrow pirate today these movies no longer get wikipedia pages it's a bold choice we are in uncharted territory no one has sailed here Nobody else has even watched these movies. No, I refuse to believe anyone has seen Royally Undercover. Royally Undercover. (laughs) I'm going to put that movie Uh, on and it's going to burn my face off like the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, honestly, if if the Christmas one didn't do it, I don't know what (laughs) could. I... I just can't imagine these movies getting better, right? Like the tax rebate money just has to keep running thinner and thinner and thinner. 